the Dayton City Parks October 1st meeting. Uh, call for Pledge of Allegiance. We stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. All motion. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. Okay. Um, consent agenda. You gotta take a vote. Oh. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed, same sign. All right. Uh, the consent agenda. Approval Parks Commission minutes. Entertain a motion for that. All motion. All second. First and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Uh, next on the list open form. Open to the public. Three minutes for non agenda items. Uh, do we have anybody online for? Nope, nope, I'm, no one's on. All right. Uh, then next item, council update. Councilman Trost. Uh, thank you, Commission. So there were uh, some lengthy meetings. I would encourage you to go listen to them. I'm going to just kind of cover the specifics to uh, this commission. So the Adopt a Park program was um, approved by the city council with the caveat that we'd cover the cost and not make them pay the cost for the sign. So. Um, that was good. Um, the preliminary levy was decreased, so we decreased the tax rate to 35.53 um, until we know the results of this year's contract renewals. So we've got contract renewals with the police um, and the unions, so we got to make sure that we have enough headwood in there to cover those because we can't bring them any lower after we set the preliminary levy amount. Um, and then the DCM Farms concept plan we saw last meeting that still included the parkland as recommended by the commission. The national fitness program we saw last meeting as well. And that was moved forward by the council to kind of look and see what kind of grants we can get for it. There did not seem to be a lot of um, support for just building it to build it. Um, so, but if we can get a bunch of grants for it, I think that would change things drastically. Or if we can get a local concrete company to you know, give us the concrete for free because we put a nice little placard saying that they donated it. That might be a good way too for us to uh, help cut the cost significantly. And then uh, we sent out to bid the park irrigation, both the install and then the water and electric. We sent them out as separate bids. Uh, we should hear back from those, Marty. Second, May and second, it'll be on the 22nd. 22nd of October. Okay, perfect. And that is. Pretty much it. Any questions for me? No. Thank you. Yep. All right. On to regular meeting items. Trail prioritization discussion. So at the last meeting, we discussed um, the trail segment that was uh, we were hoping to put in this year that the uh, county are going to put in in four years time with their project um, that's why we took it out of this year's project and you guys wanted to re uh, revisit what our prioritization was um, in the packet I pulled together what I felt was all the relevant information so you could have a discussion there is some information in there from uh, the presentation by Three Rivers Park District um, and what their plans are going forward. Um, so that's always good information to have to make a, you know, an informed decision. Um, so I'm looking for, you know, to you guys to have a discussion and, and fill out what the priorities are now since that one's gone away. The, the uh, previous prioritization is in here, how that was discussed in, in the past. Okay, so I do have a question for you. Okay. Um, the one section on is 
Okay, sorry. Elsie Stevens, I know that section has been removed, but what about further down? We had said balsam to Donnie Galloway. That's that's still in there. Is that, yeah, I was just wondering if that's still going forward, because I remember us talking about safe crossings, yeah. Yeah. and so I didn't safe know if that cool. would be affected with that also. So I know that that was part of the safe crossing safe routes to school i think that's what it was srrts um and they were doing some um a review of that um but i haven't had any feedback from them uh, if they were prioritizing that um and i think additionally there may be a hennepin county project that's going to uh, take in that part of the the road as well uh, at a later date so that might be a consideration but I think that we can still go ahead, and if that's something that you want to pursue, then I think that we can do that. Um, we might have to work with City of Champlain or whatever to, to make that a, a reality, but okay. I think that we can still pursue that. Okay, thank you. Matt? The county has said over the next five years, they're planning on re all the road they just redid, they're planning on digging up and going all the way down and rebuilding the road from the ground up. They're not doing any major improvements other than just to rebuild the road. So Mike, and that's when the, the trail that we were gonna do was gonna go in. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a great trail and we should prioritize it how we want it. But we may have the county say, cause that chunk of road is gonna get dug up again, just like mm -hmm. the other chunk we were looking at. Yep. And maybe we need to double check with the county and see what their plans are for that. that yeah. would be my statement. And I know that there, there was some very loose discussion. I think it's outside of their five year CIP window at the moment. Um, but they are planning on doing something at the, that end of the uh, Dayton River Road at some stage here. I'm thinking it's going to be you know, maybe just outside the five-year winter. Before 29, I think, is what they yeah. presented to us. Is it 29? I thought it was 30, but I think tw 29 was you know, the, the rehab or the redesign. I may, I may be wrong. There's too many things going on there. Okay. So when I was looking through everything, we had proposed, um, I think it might be the segment three. On segment three, we had talked about trying to connect Vinewood um, to North Diamond, but we had that huge discussion that it would probably never pass because it was too close to the intersection and too dangerous. But when we were, but looking in here and looking at um, the Forest Preserves trails, they actually show that gap for the Medicine Lake Regional Trail. They show it going way further down. Yeah. And so, but when I was looking on the maps, there's like no road that exists no. there, correct? It's a, it's a trail just through uh, through some land. That's their preferred trail route. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was just wondering what would the process be if we tried to, because we looked at Vinewood and then decided that wasn't safe. So what would it be to look at doing it more like they have in their plan? We would have to buy the land to do that. Um, we could work with them to do that. Um, we do it, if, and it's on their um, their uh, trail CIP. Uh, then it'd probably be a situation where they'll reimburse us for it. Okay. But I think that the ultimate game on that is to get through um, up to South Diamond, I believe, is their trail route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have trail from. We have trail from the park all the way up to South Diamond, and then we have nothing getting people to North Diamond. Once they're at North Diamond, then they can get all the way to Elsie Stevens. So we just have this gap between North and South. Mm -hmm. Any idea what the timeline is for Three Rivers? Uh, when the land becomes available. That's it's pretty open-ended. There's no way to narrow yeah, that they, down. They don't they don't just go in and buy stuff unless there's a willing seller and they basically they put together chunks as they come available um, so there's they don't operate on a time frame they call it a legacy project 
um, which has no end date. It's when everything is secured and they can do it. So if we would we do if we were doing it as a city, would we go through a different process? Could we um, if it like could actively see if we can buy the land and yeah. then get reimbursed? Well, We'd they would reimburse us for the trail section. We would probably have to buy the entire uh, piece of land to do it, um, and it would have to be part of a city project then, um, whether that be a park or something else. Or if a developer goes in there, we can secure um, the easement for the trail um, at that time as well. That's generally how we do it. Okay. I was just trying to understand, so it's basically just waiting. It is waiting with a no guarantee. It would be a nice to have here. Right? So going back to segment three. Apologize, I wasn't here for the discussion, but it was too close to the road or too close to the junction there, or. Yeah, it's because it's right on the curve of Dayton River Road. Okay. And that's a very high accident yep. area. I would agree. <coughs> And so to have people trying to cross there. I think the problem we have right now, though, is that you've got paths through Elm Creek, you've got paths coming up Pine View, you've got cross into Pine View Meadows, there's a path through that neighborhood. So you can literally take paths all the way from Elm Creek all the way, but you can't ultimately, once you get to Vinewood, the path stops. Right. So if someone's trying to get from Elm Creek to River Hills, which is probably our biggest neighborhood in the community, mm -hmm. right? You've got the stop. So people are like, they kind of just play Frogger on Finewood, and then they play Frogger on North Diamond Lake to get back into that neighborhood. Or they cross to, because then you've got the whole Dayton River Road. That I mean, that area right there where it goes Vinewood, North Diamond, Dayton River Road is, is dicey. Is there any plans to rebuild that, Marty? Uh, there's, uh, I think, in the redesign section of that, they're going to do some work on that intersection with Diamond, uh, Dayton River Road and North Diamond Lake Road. So that intersection, I don't know what that's going to be. We proposed a roundabout in there. Um, whether they go for that or not, I don't know. But uh, they are aware that, you know, as part of that project, we will be asking for an improvement at that intersection. 2029, 2020, 2029, I believe. Because yeah. okay. there's probably no chance of ever getting any kind of uh, a path that goes from Teakwood to Vinewood there, right? Vinewood's probably never going to have a path on it. Uh, not in the foreseeable future, because I don't think that we have the right-of-way secured down there to do that currently, so we would have to buy right-of-way to do that. Okay. It's just... You know, because you're just thinking about people that are riding bikes. Because yeah. I see them do it all the time, and all they, they just ride it on the road, which right. obviously increases potential for accidents, you know, on mm -hmm. the Vinewood, and then they get on North Diamond, and then they drive along North Diamond yeah. with cars coming at them. They just take their bikes into River Hills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then once you get to River Hills, then you can get to L.C. Stevens. And so, like, it's pretty cool what we've got. we just got that awkward spot there yeah. that... I think you know, some of that stuff along River Road there would be taken care of when that, you know, that other trail goes sure. in from 142nd up to Cloak K. Um, so is, is, there is a way to connect them, but it's just a little convoluted? Is that what we're saying? Like with all the there, I don't think there, there, as of right now, there's not there's a way to not. do it. Oh, okay. Just yeah. because we don't have the right of way on Vinewood to get up to North Diamond, and then once we get to North Diamond, we don't have the right of way there either. Right on, we don't have access to that. We have the, on North Diamond, we do have um, right away uh, easement on the north side north of the road with the development. Space. Okay. Yeah. So, so that we part of it, that. it's just getting across North Diamond is, is the issue. Yeah. Because you have cars coming from both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. You guys have any thoughts on segments two and three before we move on? Nothing new. Okay. I don't think. I'm just staring at this intersection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm still just catching up to the previous discussion, too. So. so with the cost savings by taking out segment two and three, 
we could easily do segment one, four, and five, if I'm not mistaken. Except Numbers for, wise. Except for we already said we didn't want to do five. It wasn't. Um, at our last meeting, we decided it wasn't needed because mm -hmm. they have an access at both ends into the park, so there's really no reason to have a trail. Well, that's right. We did talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we've already cut five out. So really, all we have left to look at is segment one and then that um, segment four. Unless we... Unless we pick something new. Unless we do a special session of sense and just talk about the trails and see if there's any other plots. Bring out the big maps Marty has. And Is it crazy expensive to do one of those like bike tunnels that goes under the road? <laughs> yeah, yeah there's quite a few things. Uh, it depends where it is, um, where the water table is. Um, mm -hmm. and getting our approval through the county, depending on where it is, mm -hmm. and they are phenomenally expensive as okay. well. So I was like, oh, if we're saving money on all these other ones, maybe we can do yeah. <laughs> something that would connect the trails, but yeah. Wasn't two million the estimate you got to go under Dayton Road? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, you're building a bridge under the road. Pretty right. much. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts to mm -hmm. the city. Was there any issues with segment one and four? <coughs> Excuse me. No, it was just I was wondering if we were still going to do it because of the cr safe crossing with the school, but it. Okay. And then the road getting redone, but maybe and it would just redone. be something we'd have to wait, plan with the county. Yeah. And that could end up being what we're, we're doing with this section that, you know, yeah. that the county is taking. So it might get pushed out in you know, four years or whatever. But we can certainly pursue that with the county, with Hennepin County, and see where that lies within their plans. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a handful of kids, speaking for myself and some of the neighbors now, that have kids going to school in that neighborhood. For a while it was, you know, that wasn't the case, but it's starting to turn over. My hands are really tight. Okay. On segment four, just so that the commission is aware, we've seen, uh, I think, just as far as concepts plans for that land right by. That's a good segue. Um, so we did receive a preliminary plan yesterday for the western half of segment four. So the reason I just want to bring it up was because we could yeah. ask them to build that as part of that preliminary plan, so that would not only cut down the cost, but it would get us all the way up to the so West French Lake Road there? East. East French Lake Road, sorry. So segment four, four. now, yep. do you yes, think sir, yeah. that, okay, that a portion that's of the it. the pipeline that runs through there? Is that that one? But yes. That's, yeah, okay. that's the development, but not where the trails are on top of it. Well, and oh, isn't uh, Three Rivers Park? Is that part of where the Rush Creek Regional yes. Trail runs as well? Yep. Okay, say that again. So this <laughs> segment down here that we just looked at, uh, segment four, uh -huh. um, Rush Creek Regional uh, Regional Trail is going to go along there as well. So this part we just don't know when here. Oh. Yeah, and then all of this is that chunk, and then they want the trail right here, right, Marty? Yes, corner. So if we put it in that little chunk, um, then we should be reimbursed for that, correct? Am I understanding how that process works? I'm yeah, of course. If it's part of a regional trail system, we we will get reimbursed mm -hmm. for it. Okay. Just like we did with the uh, Cloquet Overlook, where, where that trail um, into their park was there, that's part of their West Mississippi Regional Trail. So we built it and partially designed it, and then they reimbursed us for the cost. And the county did, did or a three, three rivers, rivers three park rivers district? Yeah. So, so it'll be similar here, more than likely. Yeah, that's what I would imagine. That's what we would pursue. But they go to the east from there on that corner, correct? Uh, it, yes, it would yeah. fall territorial road right. to yeah. the east. 
and the developers aren't doing, or they are potentially as they're finishing that neighborhood? Um, which neighborhood? The, this new one that we're talking about that came in yesterday. We can that one. We can get um, the right of way, uh, the easement for the trail with, from the developer, and even ask them to build it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the most, the more we can get done at the beginning, rather mm -hmm. than coming in later, would be makes yeah. sense to me. Agreed. So, I want you guys say of all these segments, that four is probably the. One of the bigger priorities and more yeah. realistic to, especially yeah. if we already have a developer in their building right now, like to get that done would probably be the top priority of the five. I'd agree. Yeah, I would agree. Agree. Yeah. Of the options we have in front of us. Yeah, of the five we have, we have yeah. Yeah. I would choose yeah. four to be the number one priority from what I'm seeing yeah. realistically. Yeah, I would say four is the top, and then we need to go forward and check with the county on segment one. And then after that, I think we need to maybe just have another session where we look at the whole map. Agreed. And find new trails. Yeah. What else do you need from us, Marty? I don't need anything else from you. I think that's everything. Cool. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item is the horse and snowmobile trails. Item C. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening. So I, I don't have a whole lot prepared. So this, the origin of this, and anyone can correct me, was just based on a conversation at, at a previous. Uh, Park Commission meeting several months ago that you know we should look at snowmobile trails. Um, snowmobile trails that through, so it, as the commission knows, there, there are currently snowmobile trails that go through uh, private property as well as through uh, Elm Creek Park Reserve. Um, the tr snowmobile trail that goes through Elm Creek Park is also a horse trail in the summer. And so the idea here, I believe, was to kind of have a discussion of preserving these. Uh, snowmobile trails as a permanent use and so currently back again is there's a, an agreement with private landowners to have snowmobile trails across farmland as we have more development those are going to disappear um, so if, if this has value to the community then this would be the time to start talking about preserving those and I don't necessarily mean preserving them where they're at currently but just having a snowmobile trail in Dayton that's permanent and if that's the desire then we need to figure out how to pay for that too. Um, so, just let's see. So, um, this is a map from uh, Northwest Trail Association. So again, this is. I'm I, I'm gonna. I don't know if it's this year or last year. I'm gonna just say it, it is a previous year's trail that goes all over, uh, past the northwestern suburbs. So just the northwestern metro. Um, this is the border of Hennepin County, and then we have Wright County here. Uh, the yellow highlighted area is the bottom three quarters of Dayton. So, as you can see, the only way to get into Dayton is through is on Brockton. If this crossing is shut down for whatever reason, there's no way to connect uh, from the larger trail system into Dayton. Uh, so, if that were to occur, either uh, there's no more snowmobile trails in Dayton other than through Elm Creek Park, or we need to create our own system. Um, and here we have uh, the Elm Creek Park Reserve, uh, summer trails on the left and winter trails on the right. Uh, the green, oh, yes, the green trail would be the horse trail that kind of goes uh, through the western leg as well as throughout the, the main portion of the park. In the winter, it's a little easier to see. It's purple, and so this would be the snowmobile trail. Um, my understanding from Three Rivers Park District is that snowmobiling is not looked upon as being a permanent trail user. It, it's there until um, there's it becomes a nuisance factor in which it might disappear. Uh, when you think of trail design, and I have to step back, I, I'm not a snowmobiler or, or 
horse rider, so I'm talking out of turn a little bit. Um, this diagram is from uh, the Minnesota DNR uh, regarding kind of trail design where there's uh, sensitive features. So generally speaking, what the guideline is is for 100 to two, 100 to 200 foot um, trail, I'm not gonna call it trail width, but as far as a buffer area, total buffer area. Um, so that would be 50 feet on either side of the trail. It's fairly significant. So when we look at trail design, just for a pedestrian trail, generally speaking, it's 20 feet wide. If we're looking for to try to create a natural experience for the snowmobile and, and uh, horse users, it's a much bigger, it's a, we're talking about a lot more land. Um, and in trying to figure out, okay, if, what are the, uh, the potential nuisance factors uh, both ways, if you have a house that's up against a trail, you know, you typically the more distance the better. If we have more distance, there's the ability of planting of trees that are, are going to be able to screen out the, the view as well as some of the noise. Um, things to think about, so on the left we have, you know, snowmobile trail in the winter where you've got trees, very forested trees on either side gives you that kind of uh, northern Minnesota experience. In the summertime, depending on the amount of rainfall, it, it's not as usable. So the idea in reading through the DNR manu trail manual is that they don't necessarily recommend having horse trails and snowmobile trails co-located together because they're just not as, uh, the snowmobile tra trails just aren't as maintained. They kind of chew the ground up when you get into um, the early spring where you have, you're in that uh, freeze-thaw cycle. Um, you know, I don't know if Marty, you're more of a horse guy than I am, but uh, <laughs> you know, in the picture at the bottom, in, in, you know, once again, these are just off of uh, primarily Google, but I believe these are all pictures in uh, Minnesota. Uh, the bottom picture is from Three Rivers, where you have horse trails that are Horse users that are on the grass, not necessarily on the on the trail, on the dirt, or yeah. what I think of as a trail. I don't yeah. know if that's better. For, the horses have a preference, or the riders have a preference. Or uh, I think as long as it's a soft, soft um, underfoot trail, the horses won't mind. They can go on the mud, or they can go on on the grass. Um, it's, they just, you know, it would be a paved surface, mm -hmm. and, and preferably not a gravel surface either. Um, it's tough on their on their feet. Um, so, I think that yeah, the bottom picture is generally what you would see. Okay. Is that? Oh, that is it. Um, so, I guess what we're looking for is some direction from the commission. Is if you know, for one, is is there interest in pursuing trails for snowmobiles and, and horses? And, and I'm describing these as permanent trails. Um, if yes, then the next step would be to talk to more people that are, are more familiar with this as far as what is the possibility <coughs> of having this in Dayton and then, and then what a, I'm trying to, to discuss the, the uh, length of trail that's appropriate. It's much different from snowmobiles where you're going you know, at least, I'm going to say 20 miles an hour or faster versus a horse that's going a good gallop at D30. Right? In my reading, you know, for snowmobiles, uh, the idea of trail length is 50 to 100 miles. So you, we can't do that in Dayton. No. Um, but we can have a loop where you can go 25 miles or, or something similar. Yeah, to that. I've done that, and it's a couple hours, great way to kill a couple hours on a Sunday or something. Um, my concern would be land viability, if that makes sense. We're talking about a 100 to 200 foot sloth of land all the way through. And with all the building going on, do we even have that? We do. Um, so in Dayton, we have roughly 4,600 acres that is not developed. Okay. Um, Can we pull up a map and kind of look at what you're talking about with some of that? I mean, could we make a loop all the way around oh. Diamond Lake for the snowmobilers, or would it just be? Uh, I it, it's a better question for the snowmobilers. Um, 
<laughs> so well, I was just talking about the land. I was going to ask if we've had any, we being city staff, I suppose, any communication with that Northwest Trail Association. Yep. Like, have they, I wanted to get involved, but I think they meet on Tuesdays, so I'm here. But um, is there, like, I feel like I see other people out riding. I know a couple of other people personally who do. I don't know how huge of an appetite there is in town, though. It's going to be expensive. The money's got to come from somewhere. That's going to be a challenge for sure. But maintaining that connection to the outside trail system, I, I think priority number one, in my personal opinion, is protecting that more than, like, this would be awesome to have, but, you know, when I look at these trails, like, yeah, I'm going to go up north for that. Like, I don't expect that in Dayton, but if I can ride from my garage to, like, Delano or something, that's super cool, too. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's, I think, maybe more... I mean, if Three Rivers even acknowledges in their park it's a limited thing, you know, when that goes away... And I think part of the Northwest Trail Association thing is that they're struggling to find every year they have to reroute their, yeah. their route um, because of development. Um, we did uh, broadly mention this to them. Um, would they be interested in something that was a permanent thing? And they, uh, the guy said, yes, they would be, but it was kind of like, ah, uh, oh, believe it when I see it type okay. thing. They you weren't know? getting checkbooks out. They weren't getting checkbooks out at that time, but he was more focused on what he was going to do for this year. But sure, you know, as sure. a long-term solution, I think they would be you know, willing to participate, at least in the discussion. Mm. I just wasn't sure if it's something that, that an organization like that has money to potentially partner with on, on something like and that. And I think their partnership would probably be more on the trail maintenance side yeah. of it. that makes sense. Two questions I have. One, as a person that's pro-snowmobiling, um, do we know, like, you know, we're talking about paths and stuff over here and budget for paths, and the paths are going to benefit 70 to 100% of the population mm -hmm. here, probably. I think we have quite a few people that use the paths in the area. Mm -hmm. Just being very mm -hmm. honest, like, I would guess probably less than 10% of our population is going to snowmobile in this area. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, I know this sounds rude, but as a person that's pro snowmobile, I just say we move on. That's my opinion. Just as I think it's just we're using taxpayer dollars or dollars that are given to the city, and I always think, like, how do we use everybody's money? Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, there's just not enough appetite for it. That's just my – just like, and again, I'm pro snowmobile. Like, I would love to do it here, but I just go up north for that, and I just know that that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I think if it's something that people – had a desire for that was going to bring people to Dayton or I mean like I think about the this kayak thing that we're talking about with the launch and the and that it's like an experience that you can come to here if there was a way that we could make that a permanent experience that is enticing enough for folks that it's going to bring people here great but I also question just because they come here to snowmobile, is that going to really add any, like, value? Like, because we don't have a lot of, like, businesses yet that they're going to, like, go spend money at the right. bar afterwards. Right. Right. I mean, you um, could make a case that maybe if there was a path that led to Sundance or led to the... Yeah. Something like that. We, we do currently ride, ride right. to Sundance. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good, right? That that yeah. works. And, like, in, in Ramsey, yep. it's like, people they drive, go on the back on Rum River Hills and on the trail and stuff and they go to the bar there. Like that's, that's and they have lunch and they have, it's like a whole yeah. thing. So that to me makes total sense because yeah. we're helping drive, you know, revenue to our local businesses. Yeah. But let's say the cost of this is 200000 or 300000 whatever it is, and then it doesn't snow next winter <laughs> or no one uses it. I'm just throwing out like realistic things. Like if only 10% or 5% of the population is using it or if it doesn't snow, in my opinion, I'd rather see us look on another segment that we're looking at for paths or add more concrete somewhere or tar somewhere or whatever for people getting out with bikes and, and, and walking and running and all that. Okay. What was your second comment then? I guess my the second was the uh, cost. Okay. Like roughly, if we had an idea, like if we wanted to get dialed in with the trail, you know, with those guys, are we looking at a couple hundred thousand? Are we looking at millions. 30? Millions. millions. Yeah. yeah. It, Okay, well, I think you get my okay. answer. <laughs> so is it the same answer with horses, horse trails? Yes. I would think so. I mean, horses are... It's just too are small part of the population. ...expensive to own, so I don't think a lot of our... Yeah. What if we added cross-country skiing or snowshoeing to the horse trails? That was or a that would be question that or I... Or paved trails as well. 
Yeah, I mean, cross-country skiing, I know a lot of people in my neighborhood cross-country ski, but I don't know if that's, like, the general population or if but I just happen to have a random... <laughs> would we be competing with uh, Three Rivers Park District over there? That's, that's what I under, also wonder, too, because they already have a really well-maintained... Yeah. thing, And it's hard to maintain cross-country skiing. And they, and they have a rental... Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice setup stuff. there. I guess my question ultimately then is for the people that live in the city of Dayton that want a horseback ride, that want a snowmobile, that want a horseshoe or a um, snowshoe or that want a cross country ski, they already have access to those things at some level already. Mm -hmm. It might not be perfect, but they have access to those things already. So, in my opinion, we would just not do this. That would be, you know, just because they don't want to double up. And again, we've got. Mm -hmm. All sorts of pavement we need to still do, you know, for walking and running and all that. I think one thing to bear in mind, we're not just looking at it from this perspective now, we're looking at it for the future when all this land is developed and we can't preserve it anymore, then you're pretty much saying that there's not going to be the opportunity for snowmobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's, that's the that's my concern. I mean, I'm not a snowmobiler, but a lot of people come here because they have access for their horses and their snowmobiles. And so... It's a huge part for me personally. I... No trailers, I, just out of my garage. Yeah, so... I guess I think that we need to look into it. That's my opinion. Well, that, I'm not saying that we have to create a ton, but what can we do to help preserve? some of their access points? What can we do to just help try to keep what already is? Mm -hmm. Because once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. After it develops, get the land for it. Is it fair to say, John, there's kind of maybe two different ways to look at this? One would be to create a whole trail system that's specific to Dayton, and one might be just to have connectivity to three rivers for horses and snowmobiles to yeah, preserve for the future versus... Well, that's it's what I'm so talking you about think more, of is trying to make the connection. Snowmobiling, where you know you just go across a lake or a farm field, it, it's very different in the winter than it is during the summer when the land is being used. Um, you know, we're talking about building pedestrian trails throughout the city. Um, you know, that's for you know, walkers, runners, and, and bikers. Um, you know, snow uh, snowmobiling or cross-country skiing or something like that's just another form of activity or horseback riding. So. Um, I'm not aware of another community that has, I should say, a city that has a public, whether it's a horse trail or a snowmobile trail. Um, so it would be very unique to Dayton. I, I would imagine the cost is a big deal, so that's got to be the factor of why nobody's doing it. So let's, we've heard both your opinions, appreciate it. Let's hear, on the way down, what are your guys' thoughts on horse trails and snowmobile trails? Um, I'm thinking from a, as a Minnesota master naturalist, I'm thinking about the trail specifically maintenance for the, for horses and how, um, you know, with that muddiness and how rough that might be to maintain. I'm wondering if uh, like something like that might be better, uh, maintained by putting a bunch of like clover or something like that down. That's not, so then it helps to soak up a lot of the rain and, and whatnot, and it might actually help with the maintenance to not be so spendy year to year um, for those trails, but that's kind of one of the only thoughts that's come through my head from that. I am not a snowmobiler or a horse rider, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in northern Minnesota, the, I mean, it's different. They actually have consistent snow, so there's probably not as much of a getting torn up like we're seeing on the top right here. Mm -hmm. But the trails in the summer are just like grass hiking trails, part of the, mm -hmm. you know, this and that, the Taconite Trail, whatever. Um, that being said, I don't think having those, you know, paying for those trails to exist in Dayton makes sense. I don't think the taxpayers would be pleased. I think it would probably make people just hate snowmobilers more because look at all that land we could be doing with some, you know, with other things with. What would we do with um, them? What, what are the other things? It would be land that houses are on giving us tax base, mm -hmm. um, parks for everyone to enjoy because mm -hmm. it's, you know, all the kids can play on them versus just the kids who have a snowmobile in their family. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what we have in Dayton today that's so much enjo so enjoyable for me isn't this 100 foot wide corridor either. It's something I can do on a Sunday that 
you know, kill some time or connect out to the to the broader trail network. And that's to me that's important to just maintaining what we can, that connection to the broader network and then Elm Creek while they have it. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a way that you know, I don't know if the city's role in that would be or the city's place, but if there's a way to keep that in mind or you know, I, don't, I don't know what that land ownership looks like in that corner of the city by Quick Trip really, but I don't know, some way to maintain that would be awesome. So there was a plot that came up for development on that trail, and we specifically asked mm -hmm. them if they would continue to allow snowmobilers to use that okay. chunk of trail to connect from Quick Trip up to East French Lake. So I think if that's what was we want to do, glass place or something. Yep. Okay. yep. If that's that what we want to do, that's part of why we want to know, so that we can continue to push for those things. So it sounds like that's kind of what I had in mind. Is cool. We're thinking about that. We're we're not going to force people to do something they don't want to do necessarily, but if it's something we can voice. I think that's valuable, and that is like the representation of some of the residents, at least. Yeah, I fight with the tax base and keeping Marty's team busy with filling the mud holes and everything. I like the clover idea; I plan it a lot myself. But everything gets muddy, and I fight myself with the tax base, so I don't think it's worth pursuing unless we can add it into discussion. But throwing money at it, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Do the right of ways and ditches get torn up much from the snowmobiles just connecting to like I usually kind of pop through the ditches and yeah. it's not like we're going fast or anything you couldn't if you wanted yeah I don't th I don't think that we have an issue with that currently um, and I, I will say I think that the picture there was fairly extreme whereas <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's muddy I think that was you know <laughs> that looks like fun to me but that looks in like a different vehicle <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four -wheeler? Oh. I'm like that's yeah. more like four wheelers that's though. fine yeah. I mean, so I, I don't again. think that that would be the issue. I think that you know a lot of these trails are used for horses and and snowmobiles. They you know in the summer you see them and there's horses on there no problem and you know they yeah. cross over and it's fine. That's um, what I was. I, the, what I remember from Elm Creek, the horse trail right there that mm -hmm. I've seen is yeah usually crossed over pretty well. But yeah. if you can shut them down when the conditions are bad, usually people don't want to be out riding. But also mm -hmm. some people have just been cooped up all winter that as yeah. soon as there's snow. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear them out, and then that can be hard on the earth. You have everything you need from us? Yep. So the direction is not to pursue the snowmobile or horse trails. I do think it's wise, though, in city council when things come up that they can ask, are you willing to keep this? And I think part of this that doesn't really cost us anything to do that, does it? I didn't think it, but I think that we have to have it on a on a plan somewhere that that is yeah so it's just yeah. like the trails thing if we if there's a trail or a park in the land that they're proposing they are aware of it because it's on a, our master plan. Can you say encourage uh, the continuity of of existing trails? I think we need to identify it to some degree at least. Is that a moment? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yes. Otherwise. We can't enforce it if it's not on the map. So, Area 21, for example, yeah. like the yep. uh, power line power lines, yep. is, a, is a snowmobile trail, and yep. we're trying to plan for that in, through Area 21. Um, I don't remember how we plan for it through the homes that are being built. I, think it's I don't think we did. I think yeah. that's the problem. I think that's why we're here today, um, because uh, residents don't want it going down underneath the power lines where it traditionally it has gone. Um, there's going to be the park there, and there's going to be houses in the right. neighborhood, and they are concerned about safety. Right. So that, that's kind of you know, what spurs some of this conversation, I think. Safety more than noise? I guess I would have thought noise. Noise, noise yeah. yeah. I mean, if they're running down you know, between in a neighborhood. I mean, you know. Safety is probably easier to treat than noise, is what I'm thinking. If it's just safety, that's you, know, you can't make sleds quieter and build... That thing was on for I think that they're worried but about it was the a speed. safety thing and, and you know marking or something speed right. sure I think that's what they you know feedback I've heard from residents is the speed coming through there um, and it's potentially going through the trail that's on the on the park there maybe people on the trail and they don't really want snowmobiles on the trail with studs on and stuff that tear up the trail so you know it could have been better planned out if we had had a plan ahead I don't think they could anyway, yeah, okay. are allowed anyway. But I think that's a good example of if we would have planned ahead and we knew we wanted that there, we could have asked the builder to put pines along the back of those homes to help then create a sound barrier. Mm -hmm. And maybe we would have asked them to 
eat up 10, 12 feet, you know, of extra land, but then those homeowners would have got guaranteed trees in the backyard, yeah. so it's kind of a trade-off. So I don't know if you're really financially putting out the builder at that point in time, but um, it's it's something to think about. I think that's a good point, the area 21. It's not, though, 12 feet, not to correct you, it's 100, 200 feet. That's if you want to keep it right. from a right. protected area, a but we're just talking from a house, so that's if you want to keep it from the sensitive ecological area. In this case, we're running it between homes, which is different. And I don't think it's... Okay. So like it's opportunistic for snowmobiles while they're, you know, while they have a place. Um, you know, once Elm Creek maybe shuts them down, if, if interest wanes, or maybe electric snowmobiles become all the rage, and then noise isn't an issue. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank Can you. Can make those oh. right now? I don't know. <laughs> just need to All right. It. Next <laughs> item is CDAA participation charts and discussion. So I originally put this in um, the packet so you would be aware of the um, the information um, just to have a discussion, um, and then I was going to ask uh, for CDAA to come back if you felt there were some questions that you wanted to ask. Since that time, Rick has uh, volunteered to come here and ask and answer any questions you have. So, Rick, do you want to come? This is Rick Klopner from CDAA. Thank you for coming. Rick actually pulled the, the, the study together. Yeah, uh, Rick Klopner, uh, 12701 Overlook Road in Dayton, Minnesota. I'm also the executive director elect of CDAA. Uh, so, I had provided some data. To Marty, just to kind of show the trends of participation in the sports of Champlain and Dayton Athletic Association and the, uh, the um, participation rate rates and the change over time. Um, and just a high level, um, just to give a, where things are going, obviously we know Dayton is growing, but just uh, from our numbers and what we're seeing, and, and we're, we're, Champlain's also seeing this data and they're putting pressure on us, um, uh, which we, I've mentioned to uh, people. Uh, before and um, to um, put pressure on the city um, to uh, um, get parkland uh, because they see this happening. So if you look at uh, seven years ago, uh, the rate, the ratio of Champlin participation to Dayton participation was about nine to one. Today it's about two and a half to one. Um, so a, a large change in in seven years. Um, and if you look at just the uh, younger grades, eight and under, it's two to one. Mm -hmm. So even if we don't add any more houses to the city, it's going to go, we have younger families, they're going to age, more of those kids are going to be uh, in, in participation, it's going to be a two to one. The, the field usage is about two and a half to one right now, what Champlin provides to Dayton. Um, and so we're in a good, good ratio there, but as you can tell, it's going to quickly change. As things are going, as you know, um, we can add land, you know, get to that two to one where we're at with the young ones. You know, we add a little park here, a little park there, that might get there. But with the growth of the city, we're not, Dayton is not going to be able to keep up. And, and we need to get land now because you, you know, our preference is to get the land now and build out as we need it. But even if you get land now, it's four or five years before you're really going to, you start getting it, get it acquired, buy it, plan it and develop it. It's going to be several years before um, there's going to be land or any parks that are usable out of this. So, um, and obviously as you get closer to develop land, the cost rise dramatically For as sure. you get, you know, 23 land is probably already getting pretty expensive. Um, so um, you're really looking at to get more affordable land unless you get an ideal uh, location. I do realize that the staff is working on um, some properties uh, are having discussions with some properties already and have in the past and will continue. Um, and so I'm encouraged to do that. Um, they ask that, you know, CDA can help um, either in planning um, or even financially. Um, our preference would be the city to purchase the land and we will help develop it. Um, but if, if you, know, you need hump to get over that, um, CDA has, we do have some funds. Uh, to help with that if, if need be, either on a loan or something like that. Um, for sure, uh, be open to those discussions. Can you go to the football slide? 
then can you walk us through, you know, the chart yeah, here yeah, foot, with foot, like age groups? And yeah, like football is a tougher one because it's it's a much smaller sport. So, um, uh, looking at this, um, so the uh, red line that's the Dayton participation. So, mm -hmm. when it comes to football, actually Dayton participation is is fairly low, but uh, total numbers of football many years ago with uh, concussion. Uh, scare actually has dropped everything dramatically okay. um, and we actually get a lot that's a one sport where we get a lot of Brooklyn Park participation and we've actually used quite a bit of school uh, land in that also okay is there um, a slide that better uh, look at the softball, larger sports baseball? would be softball baseball and soccer Could you those would be that, the ones please? probably better because those are the larger yeah. numbers okay. so so if you look at um, we were at about 10% uh, uh, and now we're over 20% of Dayton participation. Champlin has gone from that, you know, 75 down to about 50. Is that just from Champlin, like their they, population? They have aged. Yeah. Um, that's going to probably stop pretty soon. They're probably not going to be going down at, right. as much anymore. Obviously, Dayton is going to is very young. There's going to be even, like I said, even without any additional homes that rate's going to continue to climb, just if you look at our youngest age groups. And that's all age groups, this chart that, shows? That is all age groups. Oh, okay. I provided a table that showed the eight and under. I don't have that over no, time. No, that's fine. I was but, just curious. Yeah, and so I don't know if you look at soccer, <coughs> uh, again, same growth, uh, close to a little bit less, 18%. And so we're talking about a two to one, a two and a half to one, a uh, little bit less uh, or a little bit more larger of a ratio on soccer, but um, baseball and softball is closer to that two and a half one to one sure. ratio. So the, in general though, the program is growing and so we need more land to have more Thank places you. to Yes, play and definitely practice. if you look at what, yeah. you know, the age of the Dayton residents and such, yeah. there's, there's a large growth in the younger. That makes sense. I was age. a soccer coach this year for, yep. <laughs> for and, and you get a little yeah, bit of in, in historically in the past Champlin had actually helped um, maintain some of the fields at Jackson and such so we had a little bit more access there um, they're not doing that anymore um, their numbers are down they don't have the staff to be able to do it um, so if anybody that participated say had kids in, in baseball and trying to use the Jackson fields you know the, the school district lets those fields grow extremely long um, sure. They're not ever hardly ever dragged, so they're in really bad shape, and so we're we're lacking in some decent fields already in baseball and softball. Soccer, we seem to be working out. We've gotten some additional use. We'll prob probably in the future be looking to get some additional you know spaces uh, for our soccer seasons from from Dayton, but we can work with Harvey. There's a couple of ideas of what we might be able to do. Of the but that's short term. Yeah. Of the charts that you shared, it looks like our participation is going up, non-resident participation is going up, Champlin participation is going down. Right. Over the last 10 to 15 years, what are the overall participa participation numbers um, you know, from 2010 to 2024? What does the growth look like? You know, and how yeah, tight are we? And what is the growth? Is it, are we on a similar... You know, is Dayton matching Dayton's growth and participation matching up with how much CDAA is growing, or is CDAA pretty flat, it's, or where are we at? Um, it it's probably more flat right now. Uh, it is down from ten years ago, uh, probably ten or twenty percent. Uh, but again, we we're not we don't have some of the fields that we used to have uh, in the past, and we've lost some. You know, and we used to have two parks at the old. Uh, uh, even in Dayton, within we used to use more fields at the old public works. It's, there's one field now, which is pretty close to the road, which limits its use also. So there's some fields that were down in space, but uh, participation in most of the overall sports is, is down slightly. That's yeah. 10, 20 percent um, from the peak 10 or probably 15 years ago. Okay, and so if uh, if we're level or down in some of those, yep. um, does it make sense to be adding more fields or parks specifically for that if we're not necessarily seeing the growth in the participation? Um, but if you look at where how Dayton is growing, we will be growing. There, there will be growth that we won't be able to keep up with. So Dayton, a Champlin is going to not be shrinking. Uh, they're they're not going to get much less than they are now. And Dayton's pretty growing. So I said at the moment we're flat. 
right. that's after declining it's going to be it'll be increasing again and what is have there been any conversations <coughs> with getting access to back to some of those fields in champlain or no or well or the, the fields were uh, school district at like jack's mill so we still have access to them um they're just in really bad shape um and we are not allowed to maintain them mm. uh, the city of champlain could um but and that helps so we're still using them um, it's just not quality fields that we prefer not. There's safety issues. There's we can't really have games at those, uh, so it does limit our use. Of the non-resident, uh, are we? Is it mainly Brooklyn Park Rogers? Yeah. Or uh, it's Brooklyn mostly Park? Brooklyn Park. We do get a few. Actually, probably more from Maple Grove. We get some, depending on a lot of times it depends on what school uh, they're going to. Um, a couple occasionally for Rogers, not a lot uh, from Rogers. So I was just looking at it right now. If Champlin's got the majority of the field or a lot of the fields, yep. or um, you know, is there a possibility that Brooklyn Park would help fund? Yeah, this? we we do um, we do uh, lacrosse. We do use uh, fields in, in uh, Brooklyn Park um, that is used currently. Um, we can uh, uh, talk to Brooklyn Park about some of this in, in use um, and something one of our avenues uh in, in the future to do or we just limit brooklyn park participation eventually though we're getting at the point um and i know champlin's brought us up they're eventually going to force us to say dayton residents are going to have to pay a non-resident we're gonna have to charge Dayton yeah. residents more mm. do i get that i'm yeah. just looking at like from 2011 to now and baseball and softball the biggest one Dayton's gone from eight and a half percent to 21 percent right and non-res has gone from 16 to 28 so obviously champlin's carried a lot of the brunt of this but i feel like you know if dayton's gonna help it'd be cool if brooklyn park or whoever else is you know so that it's getting equal representation equal funding from all the yeah, people and, that and, it's benefiting. and currently they pay a lot more money we charge them a non-resident fee and that actually goes to the the, the cities currently mm -hmm. so that Good. that is funds that actually go um we write out to <coughs> it comes uh, back the city okay. of dayton every year um yeah. and and champlin uh, with those funds so those funds whatever from uh, brooklyn park gets split between the two cities currently i'm personally for us you know helping out in our fair share and everything and and yeah i don't i i agree that you know more field space and and everything is definitely needed having experienced that with soccer <laughs> this summer yeah. was pretty insane so um it makes sense to me. Um, I have lots of questions about like what space we currently have available that could be used as well for developing fields and whatnot. I even think about the Hayden Hills Park baseball field and mm -hmm. yeah. if that can be. Those were never used. designed to be used that way. Um, a lot of the stuff with the uh, neighborhood parks is going to be parking and you know, getting sure. people in and out, yeah, those okay. things so as well. That was the area to one, one of our big <coughs> mm -hmm. we, need, we need a lot, a lot more parking than what was originally planned. Might, might work for like a, a practice for a team of 10, but not so much. Right. Once you have a game, now you also yeah. got 20, 25, Plus 30 cars. 30 cars. And cars. And and uh, um, difference between developments 30 years ago and now, driveways are a lot closer together, and mm -hmm. so there isn't the street parking that you would in a lot of these neighborhoods that you would have had in some of the like in Champlain, some of those those neighborhoods. And so there's it's um, a double whammy there mm -hmm. if you don't sure. have the the um, off street parking. So currently we don't have land that we own that would be space that could Currently be used not, for this. No. Okay. Uh, not okay. enough. So and I, the I request used to do, 60. I, I used to do scheduling for baseball. So I'll give you an example. So uh, McNeil Field in the village um, is for 13-year-old baseball. There's four teams that share that one field for games. So you have one team that will have two games per week um, and then practice two times per week. The math doesn't work. So mm -hmm. you have McNeil that's used as a game field. Uh, Monday through Thursday, and then they practice at Jackson, which is not maintained at all. So the need really, in just for baseball, is to get probably two whole wheels, one for older kids and one for younger kids. And the request to land is 60, right? 60 acres is what we're looking for? Um, it depends on the property, but yeah, more than likely it would be And that's a want. What's the bare minimum need for two wheels? 45, 38? 
Um, no, I'm thinking it's more like 60, maybe 80. So you, you have the fields, you have parking, and then there's also res residual activity. Yep. So if you have um, you know, hundreds of people that are using that park on any given day or weekend, there needs to be an activity for the younger kids to do. So mm -hmm. now you're adding right. a playground space, yeah. uh, stormwater yeah. ponding, it, it, it becomes a bigger The trail, park. yeah. Right. You want to tie it in the trails yeah, and have it around the, on the yeah. fields. So this is a, yeah, this is a Ideally, lot you know, even if you do a large park like that, a community event, like if you ever get a very large festival, we have yeah. Elsie Stevens, but that's, by the time you get to be 40, 50,000, that probably not can be large enough for yeah. a, a, a major mm -hmm. um, event. You just aren't going to have the parking, mm -hmm. and there's no close, close by parking to, mm. to serve that park, um, even for shuttling people. And if we wait too much longer, all the land's going to be gone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and well, we agree it gone, that it's just going to get more expensive. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So then where does the, the funding come from for all? It's a mixture of things, or is it all city funding to <coughs> purchase and build? I think it's, it's generally, can, it won't, um, for the, the the big sports field, that would uh, not come from uh, development funding. No. That only goes to development parks, so it would have to come from the general fund. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be uh, tax base driven. Is there money being put aside yeah, for this? There though? has been money put aside for it. Do you know how much we have? I do not currently know what I have. 1.5 a year for the past eight, I want to say. 1.5 million? <laughs> Yeah. No. no, I think it's 150,000. I think was put away, but I don't know the exact numbers. I don't want to. Yeah, we've been we've talking we've also. Away. I think you have yeah. a couple hundred thousand at least of our yeah. our money that we've that's been put into a fund. And the yeah. okay. itself is going to cost much more than that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, the that's end goal small, is that's, that's small money compared yeah. to. The end, end goal is something like an Andrews Park or something like yeah, that, right? Yeah, that's, that's what kind I'm of seeing. Bigger, mm -hmm. bigger, yeah. can be twice the size of what. And <laughs> rough. I know. And last time you were here, we asked this, too, but like, are we thinking it's in the five million range? Are we thinking this is in the twenty million range? Like, realistically, what does this look like? It's a fire hole. Yes, between so, there. Between five <laughs> yeah. and twenty. Okay. Depend, <laughs> if, again, depends if it, on the size yeah. and the number, and right. you don't have to do it all yeah. at once. It'd be a phased approach for yeah. sure. Right. right. It's Phase getting the land is not. Yeah. Five million dollars. If it helps for benchmark, we saw some land that was potentially going to go for sale. It was about 60 acres. Um, it was in 2030 land, so it gives you the further out it is, the cheaper it is. And they were selling it for somewhere between six and eight million just for the land. Yeah. So, so for, for 60 in, acres. Yeah. So right. if we're That's in. I'd say 2030 land is already getting. Yeah. So if, so if we're in for 10 million on the land, then the build out is going to be another 10 or more. Maybe five. Maybe 15, 20 10. million. Somewhere in the 15. Yeah. So it, yeah, it depends how many yeah. structures you put in but there and what, right. what they all is. Not if you're gonna, us, and again, they we would, we, be, helping. We would yeah. be helping. Well, and that you guys have, you said before that you have grants available as we, well, we have, right? We, yeah, we have revenue and, and there are grants that you can apply for and, and mm -hmm. try and help with some of that. And obviously, we, like I said, we would um, we'd expect city to put in the basic structure, get the field, whatever we had, you know, help with dugouts, lighting. Irrigation and other stuff like that. From a revenue perspective, do we know how Andrews does on some of the different things that they sell there? I do. Uh, concession? Because that to me would be part of it is if we're going to take on right. a $20 they, million dollar hit, what can we do over a 10, I, 20, yeah, 30 they, year they plan to try it, to bring revenue yeah, back in for the city? They lease it out to currently it's uh, the lookout. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mostly they want to do it just to, for the people there. I don't think they're looking at it as a revenue, but I, I do. I think they are paid so I don't have any idea how much it is though. But they're still getting the lease. Yes. But it, yeah. it is, but the city is also building that, you know, essentially a commercial kitchen and leasing it back to try to make its money, its investment back. So it's, I can't imagine it's a money maker for Champlain. It's, it's just a, could it maintain, trying to bring it's just maintaining. The building. Yeah. So, so I guess my question is, this isn't, I mean, you've come a couple of times. And we've always said we need the fields. So I kind of feel like we just keep talking. I mean, I'm not trying to be, but we just keep talking in circles. So what is our next step as a commission? How do we help? What do we do? Because... Has there been people looking for the city 
for this land? We've because been looking. I'm just curious what those next steps are because of the fact that. Is there that a way to look harder? We've been looking. <laughs> Pick I up mean, more rocks. The, the fire station, looking. they were looking, and then maybe it's just a matter of waiting, and then the right place came up, but. We have, wait a minute. Over the years, happen. we've looked at numerous uh, different uh, plots of land, um, and for whatever reason, um, they've not come by. Um, people have taken options on land that was going to be <laughs> used for um, a park. Um, some people have uh, decided they didn't want it to be a park and wanted it to be developed. Um, others' family members said that they don't want it to go that way, um, they would rather sell it. Um, and some are just, you know, we haven't made that much progress on it. Um, either it goes up in value once they find out the city's developing it um, as a park. Um, so we have been looking, and there's several things come across the table. We've done concept plans numerous times on different uh, 80 acres, 100 acres, 120 acre lots of land, but none of them have actually come through to fruition. Um, we are looking at uh, getting a land broker to start looking actively for the city, the same kind of process that we use for the fire department. Sure. Um, so that's kind of where we're at at the moment. But it's not that the city's not looking, we've been actively sure. looking for a number okay. of years. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Anything you want me to try and find out? We, and I know we talked about this last time you were here, but Currently this year, all of the parks that we have are being used by CDA for sports, or there's only some that you're using and some that... Because I know there's some that weren't at the level that you want them to be at that aren't yeah, getting they, used. I believe, uh, Di Diamond Lake Diamonds. So public <laughs> works. The old public works. Yeah. 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 And you used Rivers Bend Park as well, didn't you? Yeah, yes. so that's one you're yep. looking at. We're looking at improving, I mm. believe, is Diamond Lakes. Um, we are using Rivers Bend. We're using uh, the fields here. So that's the other thing I was thinking, like from a cost perspective, if the city's involved instead of having to do, you know, if we're struggling to find land or whatever it may be, maybe we make a commitment each year to doing a different level of maintenance at the existing fields um, to make them more usable or up to the level that you need them to be at. And then we do those projects rather than, you know, if we can't get the new land and work with what we have. I think it, it still comes back down to you know the, the other fields that we're using for practice that aren't really suitable for games. Um, again, it's a parking situation more than anything. Mm -hmm. And the one down on Diamond, Diamond Lake Diamonds um, is too close to the road, that's, and that's a bigger issue there. But Rivers Bend Park, um, it's got limited park in there. Um, I think you know it's one thing to have a practice there, but when you've got two teams bringing everybody, you're yeah, doubling the amount of people. I think, I think that is where they, we had used that this year I believe yes. Yes. games and it worked worked fine I, oh, I good. drove okay. by it I don't think that was you know, it was parking down the road but it wasn't mm -hmm. you know again those houses the driveways are farther apart so there's mm -hmm. sufficient street there's parking more, yeah. Marty how um, attached are you to that highway department down there the maintenance building on Diamond Lakes how a texture? I, well, it's <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there that has to it's go useful somewhere. storage for us at this time Sure. All our overflow storage is in there that we can't fit in the current public works building. But if we expand that and clean out this place, we'd be able to help build but a better ballpark there. There was two fields there to make one. Mm -hmm. One field that with parking maybe that yeah. could address. It's a shuffle of the cards, but an idea. Yep. Rick, can I lead the witness a little bit here? So sure. you had emailed me, and there's a question that wasn't asked that I thought might be helpful for them. If we, if Dayton residents had to pay a non-resident fee, what would that cost the average household? Oh boy, I'd have to look at the numbers. I, I, I I'm thinking uh, a typical family probably would be about 150 dollars a year. Have to pay. And right now it's like I, 90, right? You're saying additional, numbers, additional above like, what they're so paying now. So if you have two kids and you're doing each doing two sports and two okay. outdoor sports, oh okay, and so if you're having to pay an additional. I think it's like thirty dollars a sport. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's sixty, one hundred and twenty. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe it's five. I think I was figuring out five sports. Maybe they did one did three and one did two outdoor mm -hmm. sports and be under additional one hundred fifty dollars a family. So for me, that was good context. I wanted to make sure you guys heard it yeah. from him. Mm -hmm. The other thing that John said that might scare some people is, well, we need something twice the size of Andrews. So just for for. Um, Level setting. Dayton's got twenty-five thousand people. Uh, sorry, Champlain's got about twenty-five thousand people in it. 
Zach and John did some projections, and when Dayton's fully built out, what was the number you guys came to? Around 50,000. Twice the size of Champlain. Wow. But that's not going to come tomorrow. That'll be 20, no. 40, 20, yeah. 50, yeah. and beyond. And, and, uh, well, you're right. If you yeah. compared Champlain, Benchmark, most, most cities, it's underparked. There is not as much parks yeah. as most communities. That makes sense. Um, yeah. It's about baseball field, I think. I provided some benchmark data, and I think uh, Eric Carlson had provided mm -hmm. as well. Uh, one park per thousand residents. On uh, I think that yeah. it, that might have included so, school parks, mm -hmm. or whatever. But told mold land, it's it's slightly under uh, where most communities uh, in the metro are. I do I do think that it makes sense to try to find land sooner than later. And and although we might not get the most revenue from something like this, I do think that it is a draw in any community. I mean, Andrews Park is used so yeah. much <laughs> by... Yeah, they, they do a great job with the utilization of what they've got. I mean, they yeah. tried to get more years ago, more land and parks and referendums turned yeah. down. And they're struggling. They got, you know, they put in a very large, you know, beautiful space at a very expensive mm -hmm. cost because it came later when things were developed. But yeah. On, I think along the river. Yeah. I feel like Dayton residents would be proud to have our own version. I'd love to take that. my kid to sports in, in our own town. Yes, so far as that exactly. Uh, which is still great. It's, yep. it's yes. close, but yeah, as a point of pride, I'd love to not pay the fee and be in town. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Rick. All right. Thank you. Um, last item E, <coughs> dedication. <coughs> Park dedication cash fee expenditure policy. Marty. That's a lot more. <laughs> um, so this is something that uh, Zach asked me to include in the packet. Um, it's, I think the staff report uh, uh, outlines what we're trying to achieve here. I think there was some confusion as to where funds were going. Um, where it was going, uh, the park dedication fees were put into a central pot, and it was either you know seventy five percent to parks and twenty five percent to trails, or some some uh, percentage that way. Um, and I think that what we're trying to get to now, and what's been talked about, is that uh, the the bigger percentage of the uh, park dedication fee goes through a uh, park in the neighbourhood uh, where that those fees were collected. And I think this is a, a uh, a first stab at trying to pull this policy together. So um, I was looking at you guys to, to look through it and come back with any um, changes or comments or that kind of thing that needs to be included in here. Um, and then we'll take, take that back to Zach and, and then ultimately go to the council for approval. So we don't have any specific funds for trails since the 25% is for the premier? Uh, I think there. I think there's a separate trail fund now. Okay. Yeah, there's a separate. Yeah. They get park dedication fees and trail dedication fees, yeah. but they all come from um, brand new homes being built, so they're not part of the tax levy. Okay. Just want to make sure so our trails weren't dropped. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So that document is separate. It's not that it's yeah. been dropped. Would that 25% for Premier Destination be eligible, like something like Elsie Stevens, as well as this potential future community park? Those would both be the kind of central. That's my understanding of it, yes. Is, is this basically putting in writing what the default practice has been generally? If, if we were to look over the past no, this couple is, of years, this how, is how something is totally different to what we have been. It's just been going to a central uh, fund, and then sure. we would design the park and then fund it yep. from that central fund, wherever that money was coming so from. Do so we know this is um, trying to put money back to where it came mm -hmm. from? More mm -hmm. than do we know what it's actually shaken out to be? Have most of the funds gone to neighborhood parks, and we've been lacking on the community park? Funds or vice versa. I think the majority of it actually spend. I think the majority of it has gone to neighborhood parks. Okay. You're looking at me. So seven. Zach told us seven eighths. Seven eighths goes to the neighborhood upon yeah. which the money was collected, and one eighth yeah. goes back to the okay. premier destination. Yeah. As it, and that's been the general. That's what Zach told us at the last. I think it was the last finance yeah. update. Which we know aren't cheap, anyways, by area twenty-one and that build out. 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, um, if n how do we end up paying for maintenance and when we have to redo a car? So that's a separate fund. Um, that comes from the general fund and the maintenance budget for the parks. So that there will be a separate fund. Uh, I can't remember what the number is, but it was something that we, uh, when we tried to do Donahue Dells, we found out we couldn't use the dedication funds there. So we set up a, a separate fund that is funded through taxpayer dollars, um, and that goes to replacing or renewing existing parks. This Service. is only for brand new parks. Okay. And is that maintenance fund just a general pool for when it's needed for whichever park? If one park needs a huge upgrade, it gets it. If, if, or is it like each park gets a percentage? It's not like it, it will be wh where the need is. Okay. Sure, that makes sense. Any other thoughts from anybody on first glance? And if you want to email me something, if you think about something after the meeting, then feel free to just send it to me. Okay. Marty, are, are you looking for just a review or for an approval? I'm not looking for, for an review. approval at this stage. Okay. I was looking for a discussion and a if there's review. there's any questions that we have. Yeah. I can't think of any questions right now. Okay. When will this go in front of council? Uh, I'm not sure I need to talk with Zach about that. Are, are you thinking that we should get an approval from these guys and then send it to the council? My concern would be is that if you were going to bring this to council before the next planning commission meeting, they wouldn't have a chance to make an actual um, Suggestion or what's the appropriate? I can't think of the term. Right, thank you. Recommendation to the council. Okay. Um, but I'd hate for them to miss the opportunity to make an actual recommendation, which is why I was asking when you were planning and putting this in front of council. Okay. Well, we can certainly bring it back, uh, you know, with any comments and changes to the next uh, park commission meeting, and then we'll have an approval at that stage and then forward it to the council. Right. Works for me. The other item that we had to email you, Marty, from the last meeting, did you start receiving information from yeah, your, I've, the, bar, the bench types? Yeah, Brad sent me some stuff today. Um, who else we got? Um, Dave's and Carrie. Okay. So if you two mm -hmm. also get that in, that'd be great. I helped Danielle with a letter. So. <laughs> did. I did. You wrote a letter. First one ever, but it was cool. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah. Um, I know the city did like that community engagement survey thing for council. When those results are compiled, are, are we able to get a copy of those too as commission members just to help us have these discussions and um, know, our constituents? There was a request to have it on this meeting, but. Um, uh, Zach wanted the council to weigh in on it first and, and get their thoughts on it, and then sure. we will bring it to the council sure. at the next, uh, potentially next uh, uh, park commission meeting. When is it going in front of the council? I'm not sure when that is. Uh, October 8th, so the next meeting. So, so this November week. we would see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it will be made available to the public, too, at the point it's been available to the council. Or shortly after is what's that? Uh, the next day. Yeah, yeah the next day. Because okay. it'll be part of the cancel so yeah. packet. Get it in my email. So you we'll would be able it. to see sure. it before that if you wanted to. And that may tie directly into the question I asked Rick earlier. Because there was a question on there about an I think the athletic complex was one of the questions. Yep. And so there may be some tie into what I asked him and what you see in the results. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking that'll help other stuff too, the snowmobiling thing. How are people prioritizing? Maybe if everyone said we need more outdoors, I don't know. I think it'd be really valuable to have that information when mm -hmm. it's available. Yeah. 
Anybody else have any questions for Marty before we move on to the next one? All right. Uh, notice announcements. Next commission meeting uh, will be November 5th already. Uh, May the 5th. I was going to say, that sounds wow. like a busy day. Election day. That's awesome. In the past we did okay. it. Last time we did the Monday prior, didn't we? Break out the calendars. Yeah. Makes we can do Monday or Wednesday. I think we did the Monday before. I'm good with the Monday prior. The fourth? Sure. Is that fine with the I election? say without looking at my calendar. Doing it the Monday before? They've had city council meetings the night before, so I okay. would imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. So eleven four for the next one. Sure. Okay. Very good. Works for me. Just double check the calendar. Yes. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I don't know who all knows already, but this is my last um, park commission meeting. I'm moving to Owatonna at the end of the month, so. Oh, wow. I know. So I'm. I'll we'll miss you. Thank you. you. Going to work for Federated or what? My husband is, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's there you why go. we're moving. That's why people so. go to Owatonna. <laughs> 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 I've been through this before. <laughs> you know something about something. Yes, so I appreciate you all, and it's been fun while I've been here. It's gonna, It was a really tough decision, but it's best for our family, and well, good luck. it's a good place. Yeah. It's a very good I place. Hope. I've no, been we, there. We've had there. friend we've lost friends to Owatonna before. <laughs> it's a good place. <laughs> well, thank, we'll you you yeah, thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you. Pretty south. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Well thanks know. for everything. Yes, thank you all. Uh entertain a motion to adjourn. My motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you.